Sweden's next-generation submarines, the A-26 Blakinga class, are quietly moving into their final production phase, a milestone that symbolizes both persistence and ambition. After years of redesigns, funding debates, and industrial delays, Stockholm and Saab Kockums are now advancing the two stealth boats that will redefine underwater warfare in the Baltic and Arctic theaters. Recent defense announcements from Sweden's Defense Materiel Administration confirm that a new 9.6 billion SEK order has been approved to complete the construction of HMS Blekinge and HMS Skana, with deliveries now planned for 2031 and 2033 respectively. This marks the transition from prototyping to full-scale production, albeit under tighter scrutiny and at higher cost than ever before. The A-26 project has been one of the most ambitious naval undertakings in Sweden's modern history. Conceived more than a decade ago to replace the aging Södermanland and Gotland submarines, it was designed from the start for modularity, stealth, and Arctic endurance. Its centerpiece is an advanced air-independent propulsion system derived from the Stirling engine technology that made the Gotland class famous. This allows the submarines to remain submerged for weeks, operating silently in the shallow, noisy waters of the Baltic, where traditional nuclear-powered boats would struggle. Saab's engineers have paired this propulsion with new composite hull structures, acoustic dampening coatings, and a redesigned hydrodynamic shape optimized for minimal signatures. Beyond propulsion, the A26 represents a leap in flexibility. Its multi-mission portal, a large lock amidships, can launch special forces teams, underwater drones, or seabed sensors without surfacing. This capability gives Sweden a unique dual role in NATO, surveillance and deterrence. After formally joining the alliance in 2024, Stockholm began aligning its naval doctrine with the alliance's northern and Arctic commands. The A-26 will act as a mobile intelligence platform, able to monitor undersea cables, detect hostile submarines, and secure critical maritime routes between the Baltic and the North Atlantic. However, progress has come with complications. Reports released in October 2025 show that total program costs have climbed to nearly 25 billion SEK, up from the original 16 billion projected a decade ago. Inflation, supply chain bottlenecks, and labor shortages in Sweden's shipbuilding sector all contributed. Saab Kockums, the primary contractor had to rebuild much of its submarine workforce after years of dormancy in the early 2010s. FMV has since restructured the contract, splitting risk more evenly between government and industry to avoid further overruns. The production process is now modularized. Hull sections for the Blakinga are already complete, while systems integration for the Skana will begin next year. To bridge the gap before the A26 enters service, Sweden has also upgraded its Gotland-class boats, adding new combat systems, sensors, and command modules identical to those intended for the Blekinge. These refitted submarines serve as both test beds and insurance policies allowing the Navy to validate A-26 technologies while maintaining patrol readiness. The strategy reflects a pragmatic balance between innovation and continuity. Rather than risking unproven systems all at once, Sweden is phasing them in through existing platforms. Technically, the A-26 will be among the most advanced diesel-electric submarines in the world. It carries a digital command architecture built for NATO interoperability, 
a new generation of flank arrays and optronic masts, an integration for modern torpedoes, and anti-ship missiles. The automation level will reduce the crew requirement to around 25 sailors, extending endurance and lowering operating costs. Saab has emphasized cybersecurity hardening, an area increasingly relevant as undersea networks become prime targets for hybrid operations. Strategically, the submarine's timing could not be more crucial. The Baltic has become one of Europe's most contested maritime zones after repeated incidents of sabotage, signal interference, and drone incursions. For NATO, Sweden's undersea capability adds a silent layer of deterrence, one capable of detecting and tracking adversarial submarines or striking them without warning. The A-26's shallow draft design is particularly suited for littoral warfare, where stealth and endurance matter more than speed or deep ocean range. In Arctic waters, its hybrid sonar suite will extend situational awareness across the GIUK Gap and Greenland Seas, helping to close surveillance blind spots that have worried NATO planners for years. Still, the program remains vulnerable. Each year of delay risks creating a temporary gap in Sweden's submarine coverage once the older boats retire. The challenge is amplified by the increasing complexity of components such as sensor arrays and lithium-ion battery modules, many sourced from limited suppliers. Saab has moved to secure long-term agreements for rare metals and battery cells, while the Swedish government considers incentives to stabilize the domestic defense workforce. The broader European trend of rearmament has further tightened industrial capacity, with shipyards in Germany and the Netherlands also stretched thin. The political dimension is equally important. Parliament has faced growing criticism over transparency in cost reporting and delivery schedules. Yet, despite fiscal pressure, there is a broad consensus that the A26 program must succeed, both for national credibility and for maintaining Sweden's self-reliant defense industry. The ability to design and build submarines domestically is seen as a strategic asset that few nations possess. It ensures that Sweden can upgrade, repair, or modify its fleet independently, even under wartime conditions. Saab executives have described the A26 as the anchor project that keeps advanced naval manufacturing alive in Scandinavia. Looking ahead, three scenarios are plausible. In the best case, the current adjustments stabilize the schedule, allowing HMS Blekinga to enter trials by 2030 and HMS Skana by 2032. Sweden then regains a cutting-edge undersea force by the early 2030s, seamlessly integrated into NATO's Baltic and Arctic defense grids. A middle scenario envisions further slippage, forcing the Navy to extend the Gotlands yet again and rely more heavily on allied ASW assets. The worst-case scenario, a protracted cost spiral, would jeopardize Sweden's submarine building autonomy altogether, pushing Stockholm toward shared procurement or leasing arrangements. For now, optimism prevails. The new order signed this October formally secures funding through completion, and Saab's yards in Karlskrona are operating at full capacity. Satellite images show the first hull taking shape under covered assembly halls, a tangible sign of momentum. If successful, the A26 will not only restore Sweden's silent deterrent, but also showcase how small nations can sustain world-class defense industries through perseverance and partnership. In an age of resurgent great power rivalry, the Baltic once again becomes a theater where silence is strength, 
and Sweden's A26 Blekinge class, the hunters beneath the waves, are preparing to prove it.